Good morning, KBC, and um, welcome to today's service. Um, I hope all of you had a, a wonderful Christmas and a great new year. And with the new year comes new announcements. <laughs> so let's get into it, shall we? So our mission of the month is Outflow. So this month, our mission will be focusing on St. John Outflow. There are a couple ways you can support Outflow this month, and things are about to get really exciting. So first of all, coldest night of the year. I remember coldest night of the year. I have a hat. So, KBC Youth will be raising money for St. John Outthrow through the coldest night of the year. You can join the team by clicking here. Last year was a huge success for the KBC Youth and coldest night of the year. Second of all, Outflow meals are needed once a month. Uh, we want to supply 12 meals this year, and it's a great experience for small groups, friends, and families. With COVID procedures, meals can be prepared in the KBC kitchen before you drop them off at the Outflow location. Um, once you're there, you can assist in putting them in takeout containers for 100 to 120 people. No more than four people can come in and do that. The missions committee can also provide funding for the meal ingredients, so yay! Um, if you're interested, call the office and we have tips and menu ideas if you need them. All right, tithing and offering. There are several ways you can tithe. Automatic withdrawal, e-transfers, drop-off boxes located in the main lobby beside the mailboxes, or using the Church Center app. You can also click in the link in the weekly newsletter. If you have any questions, you can contact Bobby Shannon, Sandra O'Neill, or Doug Morgan. So we are so glad you can join us online today. We will be taking proactive measures to keep our congregation safe, so be sure to check for updates via emails and Facebook about the January 16th worship service. That's all for now. Yeah. 
Good morning. It's my pleasure to be able to pray with you during this morning service. Let's come together and worship the Lord through prayer and connect with Him. If you are looking to be updated on the latest prayer requests, you can pop on to the Church Center app and look under prayer and you'll be able to see the updated list of things that uh, could use our prayer. And that might be a tool for you this morning as we worship together. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time that you've given to us to be able to connect with you and to go deeper with you. You are worthy of all honor and glory. You are faithful and you give good gifts. And I thank you for that. I thank you for each person who is tuning in this morning to worship you and to learn from you and to draw close to you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll be present in each location, everybody that is uh, tuning in. I pray that you will permeate the space and that you will draw close. We're at the beginning of a new year, Lord, and it feels like a lot has happened already. There are those of us uh, who have lost loved ones, who um, are ill or are progressing through an illness, uh, various life challenges that are happening. And I pray, Father, that you will give us peace. You will give us a peace that passes understanding. You tell us in your word to just cast our cares upon you, um, everybody who is weary to come to you, and you will give them rest. And I pray that in Jesus' name, that those of us who are um, listening right now and praying right now that are feeling weary, that we will come to you and we will connect with you and that you will give us rest. You'll give us peace and joy as we look forward to the new year. As we focus in this new year, Lord, uh, KBC is working towards going deeper, renewing our relationship with you, finding a new way that we can deepen our love for you and our relationship with you individually. And I pray that you will give us insight into that, what each person needs in order to draw close to you, in order to strengthen that relationship. I pray this year that you will be honored and glorified by how we live our lives, by the thoughts that we think, and by the choices that we make. I pray that you will clear a space in our minds and in our hearts I know that there is a, a void in each of us that can only be filled by you. And sometimes it's, it's really easy to just try to find other things uh, to keep myself busy so that um, I can try to fill that void without you, Lord. And I know that getting too busy or getting clouded or cluttered is... Um, it's just an all too easy thing to do. So I pray that you will make this space um, in my mind and in my heart and in the hearts of those that can resonate with this thought, Lord, that you will clear the space that only you can fill and that you will um, make yourself real to us in a way that we have not experienced before, in a, in a way that um, gives new life and new energy. Thank you so much for your love and for your goodness. And I pray as we continue through the service that you will speak to us. Your word will be clear and it will be something that we don't just um, leave after the service is over, but that stays with us throughout the rest of the week and through the rest of this year. Thank you, Jesus. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Eclipsed by glory, 
Well, good morning, KBC, and welcome to January 9th. And, you know, I kind of find it a little bit ironic. This is the exact same place I sat in, March 2019, when I began these online services and we began to go on this journey of COVID. And here we are, January 2022, and I'm in the exact same spot. You know, and as we go into 2022, one of the things that people say is that, you know, we got to turn over a new leaf. And for me, I just wonder, are we running out of leaves to turn over? And one thing as a Christian, I need to continue to remind myself of through this journey is that no matter what, Jesus wins. You know, as your pastor, I'm pretty excited about what God has planned for KBC. And Pastor Christian and I will be sharing today a little bit of our goals. And one of the main goals is that I want each of us to take one more step towards loving God in 2022. You'll be hearing me say those words a lot this year. Take one more step. So open up your Bibles to chapter 5 of Hebrews. Chapter 5 of Hebrews as we begin this journey of taking one more step. 
You know, the new year brings new steps and new journeys. And I believe that this is just one of those ones that we're going to take towards a firmer foundation in loving God. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. It says these words. We have much to say about this, but it's hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for mature, is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying up again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of, of faith in God, instruction about baptism, the laying on hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and, and that produces a crop useful for those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are confident of, of better things in your case, things that accompany salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and, and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show that same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Let's pray. Father God, as we go into this time of teaching, God, I know it's online, but I pray that the words that I speak right now are words that come from a meditation of my heart with you. And God, I pray that the words I speak are only words that you want me to speak. And God, I pray that as we go into this journey, that you just help us take one more step towards loving you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, again, I'm not a big New Year's resolution type of guy. I'm more typical along these lines to see if God wants there to be any changes in my life in 2022. And if there are, he needs to help me change in them. January 1st is a day where we take some healthy steps. And some of those healthy steps include just going for a walk or, or taking um, a trip to the gym or maybe opening up a cookbook for the first time. These small little steps help us on this journey. You know, it's about these small steps that we need to take. For me, the main issue I have as a human being is I like to take gigantic steps. You know, when I start something, it's the big steps that I find um, at the start. You know, if it's a renovation project, for example, you know, I'll start the demolition before I've even showed up to the hardware store. Or when I'm fixing appliance of some sort, you know, I, I often take it apart before actually looking at the manual or researching on how to fix it. This often causes disappointment and failure. And the end, it ends up having me throw the, that product out or whatever it may be. You know, Christian faith for me is a lot like this. Whether you've been a Christian for 50 years or you just came to know Jesus in 2021, when it comes to December, we, we like to you know see a, a huge step in January 1st. You know, we want to have January 1st start off with a big bang for us as Christians and, and commit ourselves to something maybe we're way, was way beyond our grasp, more than we can chew off. Or, you know, by the third week of January, we've already gone to a place of disappointment because we've already feel we've lost focus of what we've committed in January 1st. Like reading the Bible in a year or committing to praying an hour a day or may, may, may seem exciting at first, but disappointment sets in when you're, when you're not able to carry it through to completion. And we begin to wonder if we're a Christian at all. You know, I want to go back and read verse 14 for a second because there is a word that jumped out to me when I was reading it. And, I, and it reminded me of the question, how do you eat an elephant? 
one bite at a time. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14 says these words, But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good and evil. Did you hear that key word there? Constant use. Now, the Greek word for constant is this word hexis. And hexis really, you know, can be translated into habit, you know, and which reminds me of the word habitual or more lifestyle. The second part of the verse goes on to say that those that live with this lifestyle have trained themselves to do so. Now, in the context of this verse, it is speaking of the ability to discern between good and evil. You know, I love my wife. I think a lot of people know that. I hope she knows that. You know, and I always want to be a better husband and to be a better dad. And it's the little things that I do as a husband or as a father that I can do repeatedly that continues to show my love for those that I'm closest to. It's the little steps. You know, can you imagine me on January 1st saying, I want to be a, a better husband. And all of a sudden, I'm just doing these huge, gigantic new things. My wife would wonder, what's up with me? You know, and, you know, I can't keep that up forever. You know, you know, I have a tendency to f fly off the handle a little bit, even, you know, not only as a husband, as a dad. But, but it's my desire to love my wife and kids every day. I take, I need to take small baby steps towards doing so. And I need to identify areas like this that I'm failing and, and determine how do I get better one step at a time. Because it's about one more step towards being a better husband, to be being a better dad. You know, I need to know, you know, how to do that. And I believe it's one more step at a time. But in taking one more step, we need to know where we're at before we take that step towards where we want to be. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. You know, there's talk about here about leaving the elementary teachings about Christ and going on to maturity. You know, they know where they're at, Paul says, and where you want to be. The maturity. You need to leave where you're at to get to where you want to be. You know, we were searching through some old records at my mother-in-law's place, and we came across a, a bo box of old maps. And as a family growing up, we did a lot of traveling. And I love to sit in the passenger seat and, and look at the map and, and help my dad determine where we needed to be. Take a left or turn, take a right, which road we needed to go on. And I would ask my dad, how do I read the map? And he would say to me, you need to identify where you're at before I can tell you where we need to go. Again, we need to identify where we're at before we determine where we want to be. As a church, I believe that it is vital that we are all walking in the same direction. And as a pastor, and, and Chris and I, we've sat down with some leadership within the church and we looked at the vision of the church, which is to allow God to transform KBC into a 360 church led by 90 degree leaders. But again, I'm talking about these gigantic steps that I like to take as a human being. And for me as a pastor, I made the mistake of trying to jump to the finish line. We've talked about the idea of loving God and loving neighbor. And in doing so, we've seen this vertical horizontal relationship. And in the end, you know, to complete the tri triangle, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, you know, I, I wanted to jump to the hypotenuse where our neighbor loves God. And I took my eyes off of loving God and loving neighbor, and particularly loving God. You know, in, in the end, that needs to be the goal. And everything else will follow suit. You know, loving God, you know, needs to be the focus of each person that calls KBC home. Love of God has, for me, taken a back seat in the vision. And for 2022, I wanted to take the front seat. I believe that we need to begin to love God with all of our heart. You know, the good news here is that, well, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 kind of paints the good news here. That as we've, you know, wanted to jump out ahead and, and see the finish line, he says this, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work 
and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. You know, no matter what we've done, he is not unjust and he will never forget the things that you've tried to do to advance his kingdom. So where do we go from here as a church? You know, I believe that we're in a certain place right now as KBC and, and I, by the end of it, would like to see us loving God with all of our heart. You know, our goal for 2022 is to continually love God one more step. This is a concept for us in January, and by December, I want it to be a reality. What if each one of us takes one more step toward loving God? You know, what would that mean for the entirety of the church and in and, and its goal of loving God and community? You know, July 20th, 1969, if you'll remember these words that came out of a man that landed on the moon, Neil Armstrong said these words, one small step for man, one gigantic leap for humanity. In a bit, Pastor Kristen is going to explain how each of us is going to determine where we're at in loving God right now. Because you have to know where you're at before you know where you want to be. But I wanted to take a moment to share with you the importance of this. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. And we'll read verse 37. It's a popular verse for, for a lot of us. And we know this verse well. You know, in, in this conversation, you know, Jesus is, is asked the question, you know, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replied with these words, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. As a dad, I've always worked hard at being the best dad that I can be. And then I fail, and then I feel disappointed. And, and I find it goes part and parcel with being a Christian. It seems to be harder and harder. The harder I try, the harder I fail. You follow me? You know, as a dad, I want to be the best dad I can be. But it seems the harder I try, the harder I fail. You know, for me, it's about the gigantic steps that I try to take. That's one today. You know, for today, I want to talk about learning to take one small step. One small step. Because we do this as human beings. We try hard at a lot of things. We try really hard. We use our strength and we don't depend on the one that gives us the strength. We really don't end up depending on Jesus, the one that gives us the strength. So as a dad, as a father, as a follower of Jesus, I need to depend on Jesus to give me the strength. See what's interesting about this passage, and we'll talk about this a little bit more and we'll reflect on this is Jesus says these words, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. Later in the scriptures, in the gospel, it says these words, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, it's actually called the Shema, the most memorized verse in all of scripture. And, and it says these words, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. Do you hear those words? Now this is Jesus and Matthew saying the exact same words. Now Matthew is recording the words that Jesus would have spoke, but Jesus speaks the words, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Now where the complication here for me is, Where's the strength? Why does Jesus leave out the strength? Now, in a lot of um, conversations that we have about the Bible, often we have to come to a theory of why it is that Jesus or Matthew changes the words of the Shema. And this is just a theory of mine, but he's speaking to the Pharisees in this situation. And the Pharisees have been trying harder and harder with all of their strength to love God and not depending on Jesus in that process. So what Jesus might be saying here to the Pharisees, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and leaving out strength is saying, you guys got the strength part down, Pat. Now just 
Give over your heart and your soul and your mind and see where that goes. You know, one more step is important. One more step in any relationship is important. You know, if I start taking one more step towards loving my wife, if I take one more step towards loving my kids, if I take one more step to loving you, the church, that's one more step I am closer to the way Jesus loves my wife, to the way Jesus loves my kids, and the way Jesus loves the church. I want you to hear more about this from Pastor Kristen. Thanks, Brian. So today, as Brian said, we're going to talk about moving on one more step, loving God one more step. And I kind of think of this as, as when we come to cooking. So when Jacob and I got married, uh, I didn't really know how to cook. And so I followed the boxes really well. Like, I think people were a little nervous about Jacob and what he would be eating. But you know, I could cook a frozen pizza, I could make craft dinner. You know, I, I, I eventually figured it out. I started figuring it out and I started taking recipes um, that I never thought I would make and I started making them. I mean, we had been given all of this fancy crisp, or kitchen stuff and so I, I took recipes and I figured out how, how to cook it. I followed the recipe step by step. And eventually as time got on, I kind of learned that I loved cooking. Like, I thoroughly enjoy cooking. I'm not really like the best at it or anything. I'm not like Bobby Flay or Rachel Ray or anything, but I really enjoy cooking. And as time went on, I was able to start improvising in my recipes. I was able to start, you know, adding things that Jacob and I liked or the kids and I liked or, you know what I mean? Like just started adding things that I thought, oh, you know, that might be really good in this recipe. Or I learned the things that I didn't like and I would take it out of the recipe. And I just started, you know, doing my own thing. And I really, really enjoyed it. And you know, it's kind of like our walk with God. How do we continually love God one step more? And you know, as, as Brian shared with us this morning in, in Hebrews chapter 6, it says, So let's stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let's go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You know, as Christians, we have that down pat. We know and we understand, but it's time to go on deeper with God. It's time to start taking it, taking it one step more and loving God. And how do we do that? And this year we're going to hopefully help us here at KBC figure out how we can continually love God one step more. So as I grew in cooking, I figured out that I could add things into my life. So as we grow as Christians, we need to add things to our life. It's not just about just going and reading the Bible or just going to church or just doing a good deed. It's more than that. It's, it's opening God's word, studying it, taking another book, to supplement the Bible, to help us understand more about what grace is, what forgiveness is. It's more. And we have to take that step. We have to go beyond the basics so that we can love God more and in turn help others know and love God. So this year, we're going to love God one step more with all our heart, soul, and mind. And over the next few weeks, we're going to dig in deeper into that and how we can do that. But today, I want us to think and reflect on where we are with God. So if we want to love God more, we need to figure out where we currently are with God in our relationship with God. So we need to think about who is God to us? How are we loving God? What do we do to show God that we love him? We need to grow, we need to learn, and we need to try new things. So this year, I've created a spiritual assessment workbook, and you'll find it this week in your Tuesday update that you can print off at home, or you can pop into the office after Tuesday and pick it up. And in this workbook, we're going to go through the next 10 chapters of belief, and I want us to do this before we go through the t those 10 chapters. You're going to read each page and figure out where you are with God. 
So in this in this spiritual assessment workbook, I have it here, we're gonna find out how we can love God one step more. And on each page, there's a there's a simple write-up about about worship. We'll take the, the first page of worship, for example. There's simple write-up and some statements to reflect on, to figure out where you are with God and worship. And as you flip it over, there'll be hands and there'll be feet. And this is where you need to prayerfully consider where you are in your walk with God. So the hands are simply where you are with God. I want you to think about where you are with God. Currently, hands on, where are you with God? Are you a one? Which maybe you're not worshiping, and that's okay. Or maybe you're a five, and you are freely able to worship Jesus wherever you are, whenever you feel like worshiping Jesus. Now, many of us probably won't be a five, and that's okay, because that's something we, we long to be, we strive to be, we strive to be at that point where we can freely worship God whenever. And maybe, maybe we struggle with worship. So think and pray about where you are with God. Are you, are you a one? Are you a five? Are you a two or a four? Somewhere in there, I'm assuming most of us are between a two and a four. And that's okay. So color in however many hands that you are. And that's, that's good. That's how you know where you are with God. And then this is where the challenge comes in for us to take one more step to loving God. So what you're going to do is you're going to prayerfully seek God out and, and think about who you are as a person to figure out where you want to be with God by the end of 2022 in worship, in your Bible reading, in prayer, in your biblical community, in all of these different things. Where do you want to be with God? And I don't want you to fill in five. That's not the goal. The goal is not to be five. If we're a one or a two, a three or a four is okay. If you're a four, then yes, five. <laughs> Go for that. But make a realistic goal. So I know realistically for me, I'm not going to achieve a five this year. And that's okay. Because with two small kids <laughs> and, and trying to find a house and, and different schedules and stuff, sometimes it's really hard to achieve what I want. And I don't want us to fail. I don't want us to feel like we're failing because we're not going to fail. Bumps are going to come along the way. You know, in our family, bump, a bump has come along the way. And, and that bump is, is one of us is, has a gluten sensitivity. So as I have learned to become such a, a, a great baker and a great cook, I now have a bump in the road that I cannot make my really amazing cinnamon buns that I always love to make because I don't know how to make them gluten-free yet. I don't know how to do that. A bump has come and it set me back a little, but I'm taking those steps back into learning and growing as a gluten-sensitive cook. And it's all about taking baby steps, making realistic goals. So I have returned to cooking out of boxes again, the gluten-free boxes. They're amazing, they're super helpful. And in a busy life, it is really helpful. And so I, I've adjusted. I didn't, I didn't feel like I failed. I didn't feel like, oh no, I don't know how to feed my family right now. I just took the steps that I needed to take, small baby steps in order to be able to feed my family so our bellies don't hurt, which is great. And that's the same way with God. We need to take baby steps in growing more with God, realistic steps. So if you struggle to sit and read your Bible every day, listen to it in your car. If you have a smartphone, you can just get the Bible app, the Uversion Bible app, and you can simply just listen to it in your car as you're driving to work or driving to get your groceries or wherever you are. It's simple. You just start listening to your Bible. It's great. It's a great way to get your Bible reading in. And if something sparks your interest, you can make a note of it and you can go home and read it when you get home or when you have a few minutes of your day. Or if it's a real struggle, just start something simple with just reading a verse a day. But for worship, if you're really struggling with worship and, and freely, you know, when you're at church, oops, then, you know, start in the shower. Start when you're driving your car. Start at 
home. Create a space in your home where you can listen to worship music and freely let it out. You know, it's simple like that. Small little steps will help us each and every day grow closer to God. I want us to try that this year. But as you go through this, go through this spiritual assessment workbook, think and pray. Think and pray about it. Be honest with yourself. Be honest where you could be by the end of 2022. And you know what? And if you exceed that goal, that's awesome. If you don't make your goal, that's okay too. But don't let discouragement and defeat let you down because you're trying. God wants us to try more each and every day. And that's all that matters is that we're trying and we're trying to go deeper. We're not just sticking with our normal everyday routine, but we are growing. We are realizing that, oh man, I don't need, know enough about grace. I need to learn more about grace this year. So you find books, go to our church library. I'm sure there's some in there, but you find books about grace. You start reading about grace. You're learning, you're growing. And that is the whole point of 2022 is that we are continually taking one step more to loving God so that ne the next year, 2023, we can start loving our neighbors because we are full of the Holy Spirit. We are full of God, full of Jesus, ready to go out and share the good news. We're ready. We're in tune with God. We've grown. We've, we've experienced different experiences. And we're ready to help those to love God more because we're loving God more. So let's come, let's enter into 2022, ready to love God one step more. Let us come ready to experience him in new ways, to try new things, and to never ever stop loving him, even in those moments when we fail, in those moments when we just are down and, and, and life is hard. Let us take a step back, reassess, refocus, and start. Let us take what we already have in our life. Let us take what we already know about God and take it one step further. Let us move beyond the baby food. Let us move beyond the, the spiritual foundations that we have and let's build upon those this year. Let's take ourselves beyond where we are with God already. Because the experiences that we will have will be amazing. When you get to experience God in new ways, it will be so, so good and so refreshing. So let us come together and worship God. Let us come together, read his word and grow let us read new books about topics that we have no idea about. Let us try new ways of prayer. Let us build a community of believers around us. People to hold us accountable. People to build us up. People to comfort us when times are needed. Let us love God one step more. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you love us so much. That you want us to love you more and more. That we don't just get to experience you once, but we get to experience you all the time and learn so much more about you. God, I pray that 2022 is the year that we fall deeply and madly in love with you, God. That we grow closer to you each and every step of the way. Father, we love you and we want to know you more. Help us. Help us to know you more this year. In Jesus' name. So KDC, our verse for the year, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. Let's love God one step more this year. Well, thanks, Kristen. Actually encouraged me. I'm now thinking I better start cooking. Anyways, really appreciate your message. And uh, hey, guys, what will it look like? You know, it's January now when it comes to December for us to love God one more step in 2022. As you go from this place, you go from wherever you're watching this video, I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and give you strength. In Jesus' name, bye for now. All right, I better get cooking.